for the city of Phoenix. Today is a good day in the city of Phoenix. For more than a year now, Phoenix Police Department has been carefully and methodically working this case. And when it became apparent that there was a serial shooter terrorizing our community, our officers did not rest. Investigators worked every lead. They followed the evidence. They were thorough. They had a clear mission. Bring this killer to justice and get it right. I'm deeply grateful to Phoenix Police Chief Jerry Williams, the entire Phoenix Police Department, and all of the law enforcement partners here on this podium, FBI, ATF, U.S. Marshals, the Attorney General, Maricopa County Attorney, Maricopa Sheriff's Office, for all of their excellent law enforcement work they've done to make today's news possible. Phoenix police officers and our law enforcement partners have put in tens of thousands of hours to get this right. And I am grateful for the active citizens who helped this case. Phoenix police detectives sorted through 3,300 silent witness tips, and those tips led directly to where we are today. It is our residents and our law enforcement working together that has helped put a community at ease and help provide closure to the victims of these terrible crimes. Police Chief Williams. So good afternoon to everyone and thank you for taking the opportunity to be here. I'm Jerry Williams, the police chief for the city of Phoenix um, and to Mayor Stanton, thank you for those opening remarks. Oftentimes in crimes that are this extreme in nature, we hear the names of the suspects over and over again. Today, I want to focus on the victims and their families. This case plagued our community for more than a year, as the mayor mentioned to you, and left behind a trail of victims that included mothers, sons, brothers, sisters, and families still mourning the loss of their loved ones. Before we get too far into the update, I want to take a moment to go back a bit and recognize these victims and acknowledge the loss their families and truly our entire community suffered last year. Many of these cases you already know about because you've heard of them. But as the mayor said, our detectives worked tirelessly and, and investigated each and every lead. Um, and we recently connected some additional crimes. So first, during the night of August 12, 2015, shots were fired at a home in the area of 900 East Coulter Street. Fortunately, no one inside was injured. During the night of August 16th, 2015, Raul Romero was shot and killed near his home in the area of 900 East Montebello Avenue. During the early morning hours of January 1st, 2016, Jesse Olivas was shot and killed in front of a home in the area of 2800 North 58th Drive. During the night of March 17th, 2016, a 16-year-old boy was shot while walking in the area of 1100 East Moreland Street. He survived his injuries, and a second young man was with him, was not injured. During the night of March 18th, 2016, a 21-year-old man was shot while standing in the street outside of his vehicle in the area of 4300 North 73rd Avenue. He survived his injuries. During the night of April 1st, 2016, Diego Verdugo Sanchez, was shot and killed in front of a home in the area of 5500 West Turning Avenue. In the early morning hours of April 19th, 2016, Crystal Annette White was shot and killed in the area of 500 North 32nd Street. During the night of June 3rd, 2016, Horacio de Jesus Pena was shot and killed in front of a home in the area of 6700 West Flower Street. During the night of June 10th, 2016, Manuel Castro Garcia was shot and killed in front of a home in the area of 6500 West Coronado. In the early morning hours of June 12th, 2016, a vehicle was shot and damaged in the area of 6200 West Mariposa Drive. In the early morning hours of June 12th, 2016, Angela Linner, Malia Ellis and Stephanie Ellis were shot and killed in front of a home at 6300 West Berkeley Road. During the evening of July 11, 2016, a 24-year-old man and his four-year-old nephew were shot in the area of 3000 East Oak Street, while, or shot at, while they were not injured, um, at least they weren't injured physically, 
who knows how they felt mentally. Our hearts go out to the surviving families. Today, we are closer to providing them the justice they deserve. Since last June, our detectives and our task force, including the FBI, the ATF, the U.S. Marshal's Office, have been working nonstop. And finally, what we expected to happen did happen. Tips from within our own community led us to a possible suspect, and our investigation launched forward. Our team conducted exhaustive research and analysis of all known evidence to include witness statements, forensics, ballistics, surveillance videos, and so much more. The investigative team has found probable cause to arrest 23-year-old Aaron Sacedo for these crimes. Sacedo has been in custody for several weeks after his arrest for the homicide of Raul Romero, and today, Sacedo was rebooked into the Maricopa County Jail for 26 additional felony counts, including multiple counts of homicide, aggravated assault, and drive-by shootings. This arrest would not have been possible without the work of our Phoenix police officers, your Phoenix police officers, and our partnerships that we have with the FBI, the ATF, the Attorney General's Office, the U.S. Marshal's Office, and our local county and state law enforcement partners. The seamless integration of investigative resources and financial support brought this case to a successful resolution. Everyone involved has been, remained committed to providing the justice that our victims and their families deserve and provide a fair and impartial trial for the suspect. In particular, I would like to take a moment to thank Assistant Chief Mary Roberts and her leadership and the entire investigative team, especially those from our homicide unit, for their tenacity and their dedication. This group so clearly represents the values that the Phoenix Police Department has. We appreciate your patience as we continue to work through the intricacies of this very complex and very large case. Our jury will soon hear all the evidence. So let me address some of the evidence that many of you may already be speculating over. It is true that we obtained evidence from the freeway shooter series to compare with our serial shooter series. The analysis of that evidence did not link these two series. Our investigators are still researching new evidence and sharing their findings with other agencies to determine if there are other crimes and unsolved crimes related to the series. As we turn over our investigation to the Maricopa County Attorney's Office for prosecution, we hope that our community will rest a little easier and that our officers will get a little more sleep knowing that the wheels of justice are finally in motion. With that, I would like to introduce County Attorney Bill Montgomery. Thank you very much, Chief. And I want the people of the City of Phoenix to understand that at this particular point in time, what has occurred is just the latest example of the tremendous partnership and cooperation they are the benefits of, not just among state and local law enforcement agencies and officials, but also with our federal partners. We're very fortunate here within Maricopa County and really throughout Arizona to have tremendous vertical and horizontal relationships among law enforcement that don't butt up against jurisdictional lines and then have to struggle to cross over in order to work together to serve our shared constituency. No, what happened in this case was an instance in which that partnership played out to its fullest and in which the resources of everyone involved were dedicated to trying to come to a conclusion and reach a just result at this point in the investigation. Equally important, too, was the role played by the community, as Chief Williams illustrated, with over 3,300 tips that came in. Uh, my office was proud to participate in uh, contributing financially to the silent witness a fund to try to increase and encourage more tips to come forward to allow the investigation to kick off and to get to the point where we're at today. And so where are we today? Uh, again, as Chief Williams outlined for you, uh, there is a case that's been put together that will now be submitted to my office for review. And in partnership with all investigative agencies, we will undertake to review all the evidence submitted, to review which charges to charge the suspect with, that will meet a reasonable likelihood of conviction before a Maricopa County jury. And that's the goal there, to make sure that we have a case that we can prosecute successfully, that will hold responsible individuals accountable for the harm they cause to our community. And make no mistake, for the pain that both surviving victims and surviving family members of victims have suffered, 
uh, this, this may bring them justice, but it will not bring them perfect justice. But we're now going to do all we can to make sure that their loss is accounted for, acknowledged, and that individuals who are responsible will be held accountable. Thank you. I'll now be followed by the FBI Special Agent in Charge, Mike DeLeon. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Michael DeLeon. I'm the Special Agent in Charge of the FBI's Phoenix Field Division. First and foremost, I'd be remiss if I didn't say the thoughts and wishes as well as the prayers of the entire FBI organization are with the victims, their families, and friends. The other thing I'd like to do today is thank the community and the citizens for stepping up and bringing the information forward and cooperating. Uh, we truly have a great partnership with our communities, uh, and this is a great example of that. To Chief Williams and her staff, as well as our federal partners, great work and kudos to the many folks who have worked tirelessly throughout this entire investigation to see it to the point where we are today. The lab technicians, the detectives, homicide investigators, all those who have participated and worked tirelessly. Um, and then finally, the FBI's role in this. We are one of support. Uh, we provide funding as well as manpower, behavioral analysis, intelligence assessments, and we worked hand in hand and worked throughout this investigation and will continue to work until this investigation is brought to prosecution. So on behalf of the FBI, thank you. And next up will be U.S. Marshals uh, Dave Gonzalez. Thank you, Mike. As you mentioned, I'm David Gonzalez, United States Marshal for the District of Arizona. And I think it's appropriate that Chief Williams started off naming the victims of uh, this terrible, terrible uh, history of, for the Phoenix, uh, of uh, the, state, the city of Phoenix, and uh, what they went through. Uh, we hope, as she mentioned, that this does bring some closure. And, you know, it's, it's been said that a serial killer is like a chameleon, and that's what made this case so frustrating and all these types of c uh, cases frustrating that law enforcement has to deal with. But to get over that, the partnerships that, that were forged and that, that are very good here uh, in the state and also working well with our, with our communities uh, to help solve these terrible, terrible crimes. As we move forward uh, from today, and, uh, and a lot of work still to be done. Uh, we learned a lot during this investigation, and, uh, and God forbid that this ever happens again in any of our communities, that we are well prepared uh, to move forward with those and deal with those um, in a very professional um, manner. And, uh, and having said that, I'd like now to introduce uh, Gabe uh, uh, Pignon, Assistant Special Agent in Charge uh, with the ATF. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, my name is Gabriel Pignon. I'm the Assistant Special Agent in charge of the ATF here in the Phoenix Field Division. I, too, echo the sympathies and, and want to reiterate that, uh, you know, my pr thoughts and prayers on behalf of ATF are with the victims. Um, I'm fairly new to the area, and I, gotta, and I have to admit that, quite honestly, the partnerships that take place and the collaboration to bring ju uh, this individual to justice is second to none. I have worked in various other districts and other parts of the country and the partnerships and the collaborative effort that law enforcement does here in the Phoenix Metro is second to none. Uh, with that being said, I will go ahead and turn over to Sheriff Paul Pinzone. I think it's been summed up by everyone here today. What's most important is this community represents a partnership that we stand as one against the criminals and those who wish to do us harm, that even during the darkest times, we're going to stand strong and come together. We've seen this in the past, and as you heard, we hope not to see in the future, but we're prepared for it, and the most important thing that we can do is ensure that our relationship stays strong with our federal, state, local, county, and community, because as one, there's nothing that we can't overcome or address, um, but these criminals need to understand that they're the ones who should fear us and not the other way around, so thank you for what you've done to help us bring this to a closure. I'm Councilman Michael Muvikowski, also the chairman for the Public Safety Subcommittee. It's a great day for the city of Phoenix. You know, I want to thank all those individuals in the Maryvale community and the East Valley that came together to really work as a team, that were fearful and frustrated 
but they never gave up. I also want to thank the Silent Witness Program for giving the community an, out, an outlet for them to pass on this information. I'd like to thank the police officers that patrol our streets for giving that support and educating, the most important, educating our parents. We had so many parents, we had a couple meetings with the police chief and some of the commanders out there in the precincts and the frustration of parents being afraid that to even let their kids go to school. And just a little tips in the, how our police officers had these meetings and educated parents on knowing where their kids should be. And also creating a campaign of, if you see something, say something. And it works, folks. It really does work. And I also want to let the victims, the family members of the victims, know that justice will finally be served. Quiero dar las gracias a todos los miembros de nuestra comunidad que de veras trabajan con los policías, ayudarlos, ¿no? Es algo tan importante que nosotros somos el voz de la comunidad y si ven algo, hay que decir algo. Y quiero dar las gracias al Silent Witness, que es un recurso que tenemos nosotros a llamar si ven algo, que pueden llamar al Silent Witness. Y también quiero dar las gracias al jefe de policía y todos los policías que tuvieron juntas en la comunidad escuchando los testimonios de personas que tenían miedo, padres que tenían miedo a mandar a sus hijos a la escuela, y eso, los recursos que nos trajo los policías a decir, mira, no tengan miedo, esas son las cosas que necesitan. Y más que nada, a los policías que cuidan a nuestros barrios, a nuestras comunidades. Quiero dar las gracias a ellos que sean parte de este equipo that I call Team Phoenix. So thank you, and let's go Team Phoenix. Thank you. I want to welcome a few more people that uh, are up on stage with us today but uh, did not have an opportunity to speak. Be Vice Mayor Laura Pastor, Councilman Daniel Valenzuela, Councilwoman Kate Gallego, uh, and then DPS and Attorney General, General Mark Brnovich, who are not able to attend but certainly contributed both financially and through investigative purposes. Uh, thank you all for coming. Uh, we've been pleading with our community for a year now uh, to share tips, to share information with us. Uh, those tips have paid off. Uh, we are very happy with that. We are now looking uh, to pay them forward. So we're going to do our best to answer some of your questions. Uh, this is an ongoing case. This is an open investigation. It is an active investigation. So we may not be able to answer all of your questions, um, but certainly we will do our best to answer as many as I can. Certainly you see that we have uh, probably two or three cases that are newly tied to this same series. With those new ties came new evidence that continues to expand this out further and further. Uh, so with the understanding that we're going to do our best to answer your questions, I'll go ahead and take a few and hope to direct them uh, to our panel here. Uh, no motive yet. We can tell you that the victims, there seems to be no correlation between our victims, no correlation between our victims and our suspect. Right now, the, the suspect certainly would be the only one who knows the motive for sure, and the evidence hasn't yet pointed us to a motive, but we're continuing to investigate. Sorry, why did it take so long to link? Back in the back. Uh, there were tips from the community that came in that pointed us in the direction of Aaron Saucedo. Uh, once we were able to identify a suspect and begin working that case, we were then able to see additional pieces of evidence that continued to unfold piece after piece over the last few weeks until today we were able to develop enough probable cause to book him for 26 additional felony counts. Sergeant, it looks like the first two murders uh, were, were murders we did not know about. When did you guys link those to the series? Uh, sure, so those, those two were certainly linked within the last month. Uh, when we received a tip and began looking into Aaron Saucedo a little bit more and following some of the physical evidence that came with that, uh, we learned of the, of the uh, homicide of Raul Romero, uh, which we know he's in custody for at this time, and then certainly to the January um, 1st, 2016 ho homicide of Jesse Olivas. Uh, the best part about Silent Witness is it's silent. Um, however, I'm not, I'm not going to lock you down on that. I'm going to share with you that we do expect to pay $75,000 in reward money in this case. And is any of those involve associates? And I want to phrase that broadly. Anybody that... So at this, at this point, no evidence has indicated to us that there are any associates involved in this case. 
the evidence that we continue to discover daily continues to point back to one suspect. No, no, what I meant was were any reports provided by Oh, certainly that's information. The silent witness part, I'm not going to share who that particularly came from. We're going to protect the anonymity of those people. Is he charged in relation to all of the cases we see at that? He is being booked for all of those cases. As the county attorney pointed out, he will decide charges once he gets a chance to review the case. But we are certainly booking him for uh, crimes associated with all of those cases today. Is there any indication as to why he's been silent since July? Uh, you know, if you look back over our timeline, you'll see that our big media push with both the description of his vehicle and the description and, uh, and composite sketch of the suspect were released in that time period. Uh, he has told us that he did, after that, change his appearance and stop driving his BMW. Uh, so coupled with that, it would make sense that he may uh, lay low. Has he admitted to anything yet? Uh, I'm, I'm not going to get into over specifics on that. Yes. Uh, over specifics on what he has told investigators, those, uh, those continue to occur uh, as new evidence is discovered. Sure. So as the chief said, we did take evidence from the freeway shooting series and we did analyze it as part of our investigation. There is no link between those two investigations at this time. And in that case, then what is the evidence that leads Salcedo to the zero shooting? Uh, it is a wide host of evidence, including everything the chief said. There's forensics, there's witness statements, there's ballistics, there's physical evidence. It goes on and on to link him to our series. So with that, I'm going to let these people go back to work behind me. Uh, I will send out an email with booking numbers and additional charges, uh, additional questions, and how this series comes together. Uh, please look for that in the next hour or two uh, before the end of the day. You all have his booking number from before, but to make sure MCSO knows that you're going to be looking for it, the booking number you should be using is T is in Tom, 358-461, and that's 23-year-old Aaron Saucedo. Uh, our analysis of that particular piece of evidence was inconclusive. So we're not going to rule anybody out until the evidence allows us to rule somebody out, but that's very difficult to definitively rule many people out. At this point, there's no evidence linking those series. Sorry, it sounds like he's still talking. Uh, there, were, there were 12 separate incidents with uh, nine separate deaths. Um, it sounds like he's still talking or was talking at some point. Again, I'm not going to get into confessions and statements very particular to this case, uh, but certainly at, at every opportunity, our investigators are attempting and have attempted to talk to him. You said that um, he, none of these victims are linked, but the first person on that board, the death, was his mom's boyfriend. So is that the only one where he knew the person? That is correct. So the only one that we have found any evidence that the two know each other are the first case of uh, Mr. Uh, Romero so uh, was known to his mother. Is he, would you say that Jesse Olivas then is the first unknown street serial uh, shooting? Yes, these are all linked as a series, but certainly the, you're correct in saying that that was the only one where we've identified any relationship at all. Sorry, one, if going, back, going back to Jesse, why was that not linked earlier to the others that you, that you guys have put out? First question. The second question, we're saying that there was never a situation where somebody else was in a vehicle with him uh, so I can answer those both with one answer, and that's where, where is the evidence pointing. So the evidence early on did not point us to the Olivas homicide until more recently. And same thing, there's been no evidence to indicate that there were accomplices or anybody in the car at this point. The investigation is active and ongoing. Uh, there may be additional incidents. There may be additional victims out there, and that's part of the reason why we're trying to protect some of the evidence in this case. Um, but right now, the evidence that we're speaking of is evidence that we are confident, confident in as a investigative team. Thank you.